Hola y bienvenidos de vuelta. Hi and welcome back. In the previous video, we described words as bundles of features. So that, for example, a word could be defined as having the feature anger, yes or no. Having the feature joy, yes or no. We use these features to describe the emotions associated to a word and then the emotions associated to a document overall. In this video, we'll use words as features of documents so that a document will be defined as having the word sushi or not, having the word Hanover or not. This will let us uh, measure the similarity between two documents. It will let us measure the distance between a search query and a document, and it will help us cluster similar documents together. So let's say we have a group of documents, for example, the very small web pages that we have here, 12 documents. Some of them are about sushi in Hanover, some of them are about basketball, some of them are about how Hanover is cold, for example. And we wanted to find some sort of feature system that we could use to describe these documents and hopefully to group them together. We could come up with an arbitrary system, and again, every system would be arbitrary. For example, the, having the word sushi or not. Which of these documents have the word sushi? Maybe all of them will be similar. The documents D1, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 have the word sushi. Some of them, like D1 and D5, are about places where you can get sushi in Hanover because they have fresh sushi or authentic sushi, for example. Some of the documents, like D7 and D8, are about places that are not Hanover, where you can get sushi, such as Osaka and Seattle, for example. So sushi could be a feature to describe the documents. Let's try a second feature, whether the document has the word Hanover or not, because it seems that sometimes we're talking about Hanover, sometimes we're not. Some documents do have both of these words. So documents 1, 5, 9, and 10 have both the word sushi and Hanover. In documents 1 and 5, as we mentioned, these are about restaurants that we have in Hanover that serve sushi, imaginary restaurants. Uh, D10 is of the same type. D9, however, is slightly different. D9 appears to be a document about a cultural club that has um, Sushi Fridays, and they also have Origami Tuesdays, for example. It, was, it must be some sort of cultural club. Let's use a third feature, whether the document has the word origami or not, to try to describe uh, how these documents are different. Because some of them talk about restaurants, and some of them talk about cultural activities, which might include origami. So, which of these documents have the word sushi, Hanover, and origami? Really just that one, D9. This is a feature system with three features, whether you have the word sushi or not, whether you have the word Hanover or not, and whether you have the word origami or not, which can be used to describe some documents and to figure out how they are different from some other documents. And again, this system is completely arbitrary. I made it up and there's many other feature systems that we could use to describe these documents. This is just one example of what you could do, of how you can define features of them, feed them into some machine learning system. Let's keep playing with these three features and see how far it can take us. How can we use these features to measure similarity between documents? Because we uh, intuitively, we were dealing with that concept. Some of these documents were very similar. Some of them were about restaurants in Hanover. Some of them were about uh, eating sushi in some places that are not Hanover. So how can we use these features to measure distance? Let's set up an, a three-dimensional system where we have three dimensions, whether the uh, document has the word sushi or not. This is one of our axes. And if you don't have the word sushi, your value would be zero. If you do have the word sushi, your value would be one. Let's set up a second dimension where uh, you have whether the document is, has the word Hanover or not. If the document 
does not have the word Hanover, the value for this dimension would be zero. If the document does have the word Hanover, the value for this dimension would be one. Let's set up a third dimension where um, we decide whether the document has the word origami or not. If the document doesn't have origami, the value would be zero. If it does have the word origami, the value would be one. We have three features for three dimensions. So we could draw a kind of cube. And in one of the vertices of the cube, as you can see there, we would have documents that have zero for all three dimensions. Zero for, uh, for sushi because the word sushi is not in this document. Zero for Hanover because Hanover is not there. Zero for origami because origami is not there. A document like D4. So that would be the place in this three-dimensional system where this document would reside. Notice that I'm using three dimensions because that's as many as I can draw. In theory, you could have four dimensions, 200 dimensions, many others that we could have mathematically, but I'm going to stick with this three-dimensional example for now. So that's the place where D4 would live, where all of our dimensions are set to zero. How about a document like D8? Sushi in Seattle is much better than you'd expect. This document has the word sushi, so the value for the sushi dimension is one, because it does have the word. The value for the other dimensions is zero, because it does not have the words Hanover or origami. So in our little three-dimensional system, if this was the center, sushi would just be one step towards the uh, in the sushi axis, and then no steps in the Hanover axis or in the origami vertical axis. So notice that we went one step from D, uh, from the previous document, D4, D4, to D8, where we are now. How about a document like D12? Hanover is particularly cold. This document does not have the word for sushi, so the value for the sushi dimension is zero. It does have the word for Hanover, so the value for that dimension is one. If this would be the center, we would have one step in the Hanover dimension, zero steps in the sushi dimension, and zero steps in the vertical origami dimension. So we have that the distance between this document and D4, the original one, would also be one step in the Hanover direction. So the distance would be something like one. We can have a third document, which says sushi fresh is the freshest sushi in Hanover. This one has both the word sushi and Hanover in it. So in our little three-dimensional system, it will inhabit essentially the floor of the cube, where you have one step in the sushi dimension, one step in the Hanover dimension, and then no steps vertically in the origami dimension. And so it will live on the floor here, opposite to the original document. So the distance between them would be this line right here. Let's say we have something that has a value of one in all three dimensions. For example, Hanover Japan Club has Origami Tuesdays and Make Your Own Sushi Fridays. This one has a value of one for sushi because it does have the word, a value of Hanover for, for I'm sorry, a value of Hanover equals one because it does have it, and a value of origami equals one because it does have the word origami. So this one, if this is the center, it would be one step in the sushi dimension, one step in the Hanover dimension, and one vertical step in the origami dimension. So now this point, this document, lives here. If we want to measure the distance between this document and the original document, it will now be this vertical line that goes through here. As we mentioned, each of those steps would measure one unit, one arbitrary unit of measurement, which is whether it has the word or not. So if you're in the center, you go one unit or one step in the sushi dimension, one step in the Hanover dimension, and one vertical step in the origami dimension. So one, one, one. What will be the distance between one, one, one and zero, 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 which was the original document D4? The distance between these two documents is this line here. In three-dimensional space, we do have a formula to calculate it. And as a matter of fact, this formula can be uh, expanded into n-dimensional space. 
in three dimensions, it will be the difference between the sushi axis in D9 and D4. So 1 minus 0, 1 squared, which is 1. The second term would be the difference in the handover dimension between D9 and D4. So 1 minus 0, 1 squared equals 1. The third term would be the difference in the origami dimension between D9, 1, and D4, 0. 1 minus 0, 1 squared. So we have that we have the square root of those uh, subtractions is the square root of 3 equals to 1.73 units of measurement of what we had. So if D4 lives here and D9 lives here, the distance between these would be 1.73 steps from one another. This does correctly capture the intuition that these two documents are not related. They're not talking about the same things. One is talking about basketball and one is talking about uh, cultural club in Hanover. We could calculate the distance between two things that are more similar. For example, D9 and D1 are very similar. Both of them are, talk about sushi and Hanover, but one talks about an origami and the other one does not. So the distance between these two would be the difference in the sushi dimension, 1 minus 1, the difference in the Hanover dimension, 1 minus 1, and the difference in the origami dimension, 1 minus 0 squared. So you get root of 1 equals 1. As a matter of fact, the difference between these two is just the one unit, the origami unit. Now we have the capability of measuring distance between documents. So the distance between D9 and D1 is a single unit. And the distance between D9 and D4 is 1.73 units. Again, this correctly captures the intuition that D9 and D1 are somehow similar. They are talking about sushi and they're talking about sushi in Hanover. So they share more things in, in common than both of these documents and D4, which is located further away. Here's where the query would come in. A web search, for example, a query into a search system, is essentially another document. And all we would need to do is figure out the distance between this incoming document, the query, and all of the other documents in our collection. So the query has the word origami, so origami, I'm sorry, the word sushi, so it is a one in the sushi dimension. It has the word Hanover, so it is a one or yes in the Hanover dimension. And it does have the word origami, so it is a one or a yes in the origami dimension. So the difference between, I'm sorry, the distance between that one, which is one, 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 and D9, which is one, 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 is zero. Those two are the same in our featural system. So this would correctly capture the intuition that this query pref would prefer to get the document D9, which has a very short distance, than D4, which has a longer distance and appears to be unrelated to the query that we were entering. Notice, by the way, that we are essentially cap uh, calculating vector distances over three-dimensional space. We can have four features, and it will be vector distance in four-dimensional space. We could have 200 dimensions, and it will be vector distance over 200 dimensions. The math would be the same, and we could have an arbitrary number of features to define and explain a document. And we could always calculate the distance between them using the kind of algebra that we saw here. So if we have a document and we define it as features, for example, for example, having the word sushi or not, having the word Hanover or not, we can now measure the distance between two documents because we will need to, uh, we will be measuring the distance for whether this thing is 111, 000, 100, and so forth. This is essentially a kind of vectorial distance. And by the way, this is at the heart of the Google system, for example. It's a kind of vectorial search where you have a vector for the query and you try to find what, is the, what are the nearest documents to the incoming query. 
in our next video, we're gonna see at a we're gonna look at a beautiful side effect of this kind of system, which is that documents that are alike clustered together.